What's up guys this is Sunny I'm back with another video and today real quick I just wanted to share with you guys I just finished building my dual Xeon E5 2670 build with the C602 motherboard now the build cost me around 900 total including the motherboard CPU two cooler master hyper 212 cooler and a gtx 770 also the power supply from corsair x750 and the case i i kind of mod the case a little bit now as you can see the case the case is a, a freckle dis, a design defined r4 case i took the uh, the optical drive bay out and also i took the uh, hard drive bay out so I have the SSD mount uh, the back of the case and uh, I I couldn't install the hard drive cage here because as you can see the motherboard extend more uh, more than is supposed to because the motherboard side E right, so today I'll show you guys uh, the gigabit score and the cinnamon score and later on maybe uh, Monday or something I will have like the gaming benchmark for you guys today first thing first i want to clear if you guys are planning on building the same system with the two xeon e5 2670 version one these are not the v2s or v3s these are the v1s now when you look for the cpu in ebay only thing you will find e5 2670 so don't look for anything with v1 okay because they don't really call the CPU V1 version 1. They only call like the, the E5 2670 and that's it. I will have the exact model under the video description. But you can, with, with the C602 chipset motherboard, you can install a version 2 CPU. But version 2 CPU are a lot more money. Like each CPU will cost you maybe six seven hundred dollar each but if you are planning on picking the same cpu i'm using you could pick up one for like 60 bucks 64 bucks i will have the uh, link in the description for you guys now the hardest part is to get the motherboard so you can get two cpus from ebay they are all over from amazon or ebay but the motherboard is the most expensive part in this build so i got lucky and i found a uh, gigabyte uh, I think the model is 7 PES H3 it's a great motherboard uh, server motherboard but if you are planning on building the system make sure the first thing you need to find the motherboard because I picked up the CPU cooler graphic card power supply everything but I had to wait like almost a month to get a right motherboard. The first motherboard I ordered, it was DOA, and the second one, I got lucky from Craigslist. So, as you can see, exactly what I have. So I have two Cooler Master Hyper 212 Cooler, and also, as you can see, I have 32 gigs of RAMs. Now, these are 1333 megahertz, but I managed to overclock those to 1866, and it's really easy to overclock. Also, as you can see, the power supply I have, uh, Corsair X750. The modular power supply so comes with two CPU pins, so you get like two eight pins. So you know, m make sure you keep that in mind. If you are building a dual Xeon, you need to pick up a power supply that comes with dual CPU pins, eight eight, not four four. Okay, just keep that in mind. And uh, also the case, as you guys, you know you know can see now the case oh, the color co color was black but it was really scratched up i kind of modded the case a little bit so as you can see the optical drive i, I had to take it off and also the motherboard extends more because this motherboard is a e dash atx so e atx so it's even bigger than atx motherboard so make sure you keep that in mind before you you know planning on building this uh dual xeon e5 2670 make sure you have a right case you have a case that a case that holds a eatx motherboard you can go with a uh you know fecral uh design defined r4 like i did but you have to take the optical drive out and the you know hard disk bay out so that's the only bad part 
But other than that, as you can see, I pulled it off and I'm thinking about getting a NZXT S340 case and maybe do a little mod and use that case. So I'm still planning on that. But yeah, guys, other than that, the system is running flawlessly. I'm loving it. So yeah, guys, so real quick, let me just run uh, Cinebench for you guys. And I know I'm keep like talking and stuff. All right. One thing I want to clear, this system performs like a boss, okay? I spent like $900 compared to, like, compared to my 5020K, this thing kick ass, even compared to my E5 2683V3. Guys, as you can see, the Cinebench score, 2002. My E5 2658 V3 scored around 30, uh, 1372. Then my E5 2683 V3 scored around 1725. And mind you, a E5 2683 V3, the retail price is a $2,700 CPU, but I picked up a used E5 2683 uh, V3 for 750 guys and this whole system cost around $900. So if you guys are thinking about best bank for your money, here is the best bank for your money. Trust me when I tell you this. Alright, as you can see 16 core, 32 threads and you know what I, what I love looking at? I just wanna show you guys. Right. You guys can enjoy this part right here. 32 threads, guys. Look at it, 32. You can't go wrong. You know, video rendering, whatever you wanna do, anything you wanna do, this setup is ready for you. Trust me when I tell you. All right. So, so you guys seen the Geekbench? Oh, sorry, <laughs> Cinebench score 2002. All right. Oh uh, yes. Okay. And real quick, let's run Geekbench. Now, one thing, like there is like some other videos on YouTube, like. You know, I seen people build uh, dual Xeon, uh, dual Xeon uh, E5 2670 and build, but I didn't see anyone putting the Geekbench score. So I just, you know, I just wanted to like, you know, run the Geekbench and just show you guys, because I know a lot of you been asking like, oh, how, uh, you know, how this computer perform? You know, okay, the Cinebench is like 2002, but you know, Geekbench. So Cinebench score and a Geekbench score is a different score so my request to everyone if you're going to show Cinebench score please make sure you show the Geekbench score because Geekbench score is really important okay so that's the only reason I'm running the Geekbench for you guys because I didn't see anyone else you know like showing the Geekbench score so and you guys will be surprised after after seeing the Geekbench score, trust me when I tell you, because I was shocked. Compared to my Xeon E5 2683 V3, you know, that's like what? Like I say, it's a, the retail price on the CPU is like 2700 and if you buy a used one, like 900 buck or, I, I got lucky, I picked up one for 750. This freaking hundred and thirty-two dollar. Both CPU cost me hundred and thirty-two dollar. There is no competition, okay? There is no competition with the processor. Even though E5 2683V3 comes with fourteen core, and still, you know, this dual Xeons, you know, you got like sixteen core with thirty-two threads. So, you know, definitely worth it, guys. If you guys are planning on building something for workstation and maybe like slide gaming should definitely look into this all right where's the Geekbench score as you can see the Geekbench score the single core score 2737 and the multi-core score 
now you guys might get mad if I tell you this I had a 5960X okay my 5960X with overclock 4.5 gigahertz okay did around I believe 37 37,000 okay and you guys know a 5960X costs almost $900 $900 versus hundred and thirty two dollars CPUs okay the whole system cost nine hundred dollar so the whole system cost as like buying a 1560x so let me just uh, roll down a little bit for you guys as you can see as you can see Intel Xeon E5 2670 okay clock at 2.6 gigahertz and turbo up to uh, 3 gigahertz two processor 16 core 32 threads and as you can see uh, Microsoft window 10 professional and as you can see uh, Intel Sandy bridge okay oh also I have 32 gigs of RAM okay so sort of slight information if you guys are really into that so why would you build a machine like this only for gaming all right so this mission is for somebody who is looking to you know do more like 3d max uh, Maya 3d rendering after effects premiere uh, new you know fusion video rendering or QVS. Pro Tools, Stoner Audio Rendering, you know, exact, uh, like so many things you could do, you know, so many things. You can even turn this thing to a VMware virtual machine. So there's a lot of things you can do with this, okay? You can use for gaming also. I use this machine for gaming, you know, I do a lot of gaming and stuff. I play Battlefield 4, that's one of my favorite games. But um, yeah, guys, other than that, if you guys have any questions, leave in the comment below. And if you guys, you know, need any kind of help, you know, you can follow me in Twitter at NotSunny7 or you can follow me in Instagram at NotSunny7 or SunnyNot. And that should be it, guys. Also, you guys can check out my Facebook, SunnyNot. Peace.